yo what up welcome to another episode of the oakland warriors podcast i'm patrick flying solo uh the warriors they have a two-game winning streak how how about that i never thought i'd be so happy to say that so early in the season they beat the cleveland cavaliers 106 101 at chase center uh that game felt like a playoff game especially in crunch time in the fourth quarter and whatnot it's crazy because steph again is just so amazing he's such a surgeon out there he knows exactly what he's doing he knows how to get his shot off uh and he's just honestly in a lot of ways toying with defenses it's wild because i feel like out of the warriors five wins uh at least three or four of them it's all about steph i mean He's been their leading scorer, I think, pretty much in every game. And he's been their one consistent performer all season long. But in each of those games, the Warriors 100% needed Steph to win, plain and simple. And that might sound kind of odd, you know, to think that that's a big deal because Steph is obviously their, their best player, their MVP candidate once again. But it's like... You know, the depth of this team and the names on this team and the pedigree of this team, you would have thought that there would be other dudes who would be able to step up. But clearly, clearly uh, they they haven't just yet. I mean, Steph's line was was insane. Uh, He played 34 minutes, 15 for 23, six for 11 from three, four for six from the free throw line. He missed a couple at the end that should have just sealed it, which uh, you know, both he and Poole are kind of off on their free throw shooting. I mean, off for them, right? The two uh, leaders in free throw percentage last season. But that's all right. Uh, Steph had four boards, five assists, 40 points. And it's wild because he had 15 points at half. And I believe it wasn't until the 515 mark that Steph scored his 16th and 17th points. So at that point, he had 17, right? And he went on to rack off another 23 points to close out this one in the final less than quarter and a half. He's just amazing. And earlier in the season when the Warriors beat the Heat kind of on Steph's back, uh, I was like, let's remember again, never to take Steph for granted because not that fans do, but it's easy to kind of get used to his standard, his level of, of excellence and everything, and then just keep eyes on other dudes. But just what Steph does, it's it's insane. Uh, but back then, it, it was, let's not take Steph for granted. And now it's like, you got to ride Steph until everybody else catches up, right? Like, let's uh, not have Steph have a bad night. Let's not have Steph get injured because he is the only person keeping this team from going into the tank as of now. The other person, of course, is Andrew Wiggins, who I've talked about before, has been their second best player of the season, pretty much picked up where he left off after the finals. Hasn't been as consistent as Steph, but still, he hits some big shots, and his three uh, is way more dependable this season. Played 37 minutes, 8 for 13 from the floor, uh, only 1 for 4 from 3, but it was a big one. Hit all three of his free throws, six boards, two steals, one block, uh, 20 points. And if Wiggins doesn't hit some of those big shots, like the three and a couple of post-up mid-rangers, then the Warriors are in no position to win this one. Their third best scorer was Jordan Poole. Again, Jordan Poole, up and down all season long. But he showed up, you know, he showed up, had some uh, iffy dribble-happy moments where he just kind of got stuck but he played 34 minutes six for 13 from the floor four for eight from three which is big hit both of his free throws four boards three assists uh three turnovers though 18 points and i think you know i said before he was going to be helped by having dante divincenzo out there and divincenzo played 16 minutes uh oh for one only took one shot he missed a three uh three assists one board uh, zero points plus three. So not that crazy off of the stat sheet. Again, you know, DiVincenzo hasn't played much with these dudes, but I think just having him on there, taking the ball out of Jordan Poole's hands at times, allowed Jordan Poole to play more off ball, come off screens more instead of just constantly trying to create with his 
uh, shake and bake craftiness and whatnot. So I think that is something we'll continue to see, uh, which is DiVincenzo helping pool uh, be more efficient and just take more pressure off of him. I'm looking forward to that. The Warriors only played four bench dudes. Jonathan Kaminga got four minutes in the first quarter, and they were pretty bad. <laughs> uh, couldn't keep his hands on the ball, made some iffy plays, 0 for 3 from the field, two boards, uh, but two turnovers. And at that point, Kerr just wasn't having it. Besides Poole and DiVincenzo, he went with Anthony Lamb. 24 minutes, four for seven from the field, two for five from three, four boards, one assist, uh, 10 points. Now, I said in the previous episodes uh, that Lamb was kind of, I mean, Lamb and Ty Jerome after the Pelicans game, right? And then into the Kings game. Uh, I talked about how the Warriors haven't had, or they don't have right now, any of those JTA, Damian Lee types, the guys who just know how to come in and they don't really make mistakes and not saying that lamb is a perfect player, but his head uh, is in the game in the sense that he knows what he needs to do. And he executes, he just executes and he doesn't make really, really bad mistakes like the way Kaminga did in the first quarter. After that point, I mean, Kerr just knew that he wasn't going to play him the rest of the game. And I think that it's pretty telling that all the young guys plus to Michael Green didn't get on the court. I mean, I'm not going to focus so much on on Green in that respect. I think that Lamb is a little bit more mobile than Green and executes kind of more as a 3-4. And I've talked about this before, whereas Green is more like a 4-5. A so I can see Kerr using him there. But I mean, it's it's unfortunate that Moody couldn't get on the court, that Kaminga couldn't get back on the court. And then, of course, Wiseman is still riding the pine and it must have sucked for Wiseman to be honest. And it's kind of, you know, it's, it's a shame. It's a shame that, you know, somebody he played in high school in AAU, Evan Mobley, uh, the number three pick last year that Wiseman could not get on the court in a game where there were two seven footers, six eleven dudes. So that's how far back Wiseman is right now. I mean, I would be I would be super bummed sitting there watching some guy I played <laughs> growing up getting minutes and showing out. I mean, Mobley had a really really solid game. Uh he had 20 points, 8 for 15, 13 boards, two blocks, four assists. I mean, that's everything that you expect from Evan Mobley in terms of the hype, this well-rounded almost unicorn, right? Who can uh do a little bit of everything. I'm surprised Moody didn't get back on. But, you know, I think right now where it goes, I think it's clear that Steve Kerr is just wanting to find guys who can play, who can help this team win. The margin of error after that 0-5 road trip is just gone, right? There's no like, okay, let's hear some wiggle room where we can let the guys, uh, the young guys mess up and then bring them along, slowly get them up to speed. They had their chance. And for the most part, they kind of blew it. I don't necessarily lump Moody into that as much as Kaminga and Wiseman, but clearly Kerr wanted this game. And I think right now where it goes is that this is the lineup that they're going to roll out. This is the bench lineup that they're going to use. They might give Kaminga, they might give Wiseman some flash moments. Uh, I think we'll see more of Moody as time goes. But Anthony Lamb, Dante DiVincenzo, Jordan Poole, those are the three guys they're going to be playing every game off the bench. I think what the Warriors need to do is they need to start collecting some wins to kind of give them, to put them back in like a winning mode just mentally and take advantage of some games where they should win. And then once they build up a little bit of momentum, give some guys some spot minutes if Kerr thinks they deserve them. It may mean some of these guys go into the G League and getting some reps if they're going to be riding the bench for a while, especially on long home stands. But I think right now it's like the Warriors and Kerr, they want to win games. And of course, they always want to win games, but they clearly didn't expect to be 
uh, in this situation in terms of just being five and seven and before these last two wins, obviously three and seven. So to me, it's like, let's find some guys who can help us win, you know, help the Warriors win and then win some games, get back into like the, <laughs> they're not right now, the Warriors aren't even in the play in, right? They're, they're only like a couple of games back of the sixth spot, right? So it's not like a huge deal, but get back to like the positive parts of the Western conference standings, you know, start getting into a rhythm and then start putting guys in and then bringing them along uh, and seeing and giving and seeing what they can do and giving them some spot minutes to see if they can uh, help the team win, if they can be uh, positives instead of negatives. So that's what I expect. The next five games, it's at Sacramento, at home versus the Spurs, at Phoenix again, at home versus the Knicks, and then on the road in Houston. So those are all, I mean, with this team inherently, those are all winnable games. Uh, if you look at those five, I would love for them to come out of that four and one, but you know, three and two at this point, you know, you want to stay in the above 500 range uh, over these chunks and stretches that you just, you know, break down. But, you know, if they come out of this four and one, hypothetically looking at it a little optimistically and say they take some momentum out of this, then all of a sudden the Warriors are nine and eight. So for Kerr, it's like establishing that winning vibe again, that feel, and then moving on from there. NBA fans, the NBA action is just getting started, and so are the incredible offers at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. New customers can make any $5 NBA pregame money line bet and get $200 in free bets if your team wins. Check this out. Right now, everyone can earn up to a 100% boost with DraftKings stepped up same game parlays. Go to DraftKings Sportsbook app, place the same game parlay, and combine multiple bets like which team will win, total rebounds, total points scored, and more. Even though the Warriors have had a rough start, how can you not? bet on them. With payouts bigger than ever, DraftKings Sportsbook is where I go to bet on the NBA. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code TBPN. Make any $5 bet this week and get $200 in free bets if your team wins. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with promo code TBPN. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. It's it's wild because like, you know, I especially thought that, you know, moving on from Otto Porter Jr. was fine. And I know Otto Porter Jr. has been a little bit hurt this season, but, you know, he's the kind of guy that, I mean, Lamb is taking those kinds of minutes, right? He's playing a uh, small ball big. And those are the things that Otto Porter Jr. would have done. And you know, maybe, maybe Lamb is going to be solid for a while. I mean, his, his shooting is pretty <laughs> decent so far, but it's really, really a question of like, uh, I'm assuming he's like this stopgap for the season, and then when other guys can can catch up, or if they fi- need to find somebody else. I mean, it's it's really disappointing that uh, the young dudes can't give a little bit more in this respect. But you know, uh, it's a long season, and you just want to get above 500 and as far above 500 as possible right now, uh, because this team is way better than that. And then go from there. You know, just reestablish. I mean, I said after the road trip, just, you got to reset, you know, you got to, you got to flush the road trip. Um, It's going to be there on your record, but you got to flush the road trip, restart, reset the team, reset, reset expectations, reset the mindset, and then start putting some wins together. So they've done that. You know, there were only two games this past week. So they're two and oh, plain and simple. uh, And they have a, an okay looking uh, next five games. There's some travel days in there, but you know, overall, I think it's something where the Warriors can pull some of these wins out. They have a back to back, right? Going from Sunday to Monday. So they're in Sacramento, which ain't that far, but then they play against the Spurs at home on Monday. So, you know, before before on the road trip, it was like, oh, on back to backs, you can rest the starters, but I don't think Kerr is going to do that. I don't think I would do that, especially since, you know, the San Antonio game is a game that you can just, you need to collect easy wins at this point. And that's one you got to have in your pocket. There's a chance. There's a chance over these next five that the Warriors come out, come out of it looking pretty decently. 
So that's what I will be keeping my my eyes on. Uh, the 20th game, which you know, if you listen to this podcast, I always talk about, let's see this team after 20. That would be the Utah game on Friday the 25th. So after the Houston game on the 20th, it's uh, so it's at Houston, at New Orleans, at home versus the Clippers, and then at home versus Utah. So, you know, New Orleans and then the Clippers and then Utah, those are all teams that could beat the Warriors the way that it stands right now. Those are all teams the Warriors could beat. <laughs> so uh, it'll be an interesting run uh, the next uh, couple weeks. But, um, you know, you lock away two wins. Kerr probably has a better idea of where this team is. And this woke up some of the starters a little bit. I think DiVincenzo, as I've said before, is going to be pretty key. Hopefully he can stay healthy. And Clay, I mean, he didn't shoot well in this one again. His shots keep coming up short. I mean, they've been coming up short since the beginning of the season, which makes sense for a dude who didn't play much and who needs to get his legs under him. But, you know, hopefully he starts nailing some of those soon. Uh, he, He hit a big one in the fourth against Cleveland. And it was one of those where he stepped into it. He ran into it. I believe it was like a, a bit of a, a fast break. And Draymond hit Clay coming down the left sideline and he got it on the wing and he just stepped into it and, and nailed it. And those are the ones that Clay seems to hit pretty easily, the ones where he kind of gets some forward momentum. And obviously that helps him not come up short, right? as opposed to like more set shots or off the bounce, things like that or whatever. So hopefully, you know, these things start kind of dovetailing for the Warriors. Hopefully this game is a sign of at least their starters and Jordan Poole, their top six, starting to turn the corner collectively, right? I mean, uh, Looney looks good out there. Draymond still looks good out there. I mean, I think they're almost... To where they should and could be. This was a game against one of the better teams in the league against the Cavs. And it was a bit of a test. And I'm really, really glad that they rose to the challenge because for a while it looked a little iffy. But, you know, that's how these games against top teams go. Right. So I feel I feel good about this win, of course. And, you know, we'll see how they take it to Sacramento because we know that Sacramento, they're not a bad team. They're actually pretty, pretty decent. (laughs) So that's not going to be the cakewalk that it used to be, as we saw in the previous game. But Kerr is looking for just consistency from the bench. You know, in the previous game against the Kings, right, where the bench just couldn't do anything, the bench was all minus in the plus minus column. And then in this one, except for Kaminga, who was minus one, you know, Lamb plus six, DiVincenzo plus three, Poole plus one, may not be a ton, But in a game like this, that's what you want to see because the starters, they're, you know, plus two, minus three, plus seven, plus seven, plus three. You just want your bench not to be able to or not to fold. And that's what they did against the Kings. And uh, we'll see what this quote unquote revamped bench rotation will do against the Kings once again. Anyway, that's all I got for now. Let's let's, uh, keep our fingers crossed for a couple more wins. If the Warriors build some momentum and uh, get a four game winning streak going up until their game against Phoenix again. So, you know, that'll be, that'll be really, really interesting. And uh, don't get me wrong, right? The Warriors can beat Phoenix. It, just the version that we saw on the road could not. So if they're starting to clean things up and get their competitive juices going and find their legs, then we're talking. And then we're talking about getting into a rhythm this season. All right. Well, that is another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Feel free to hit me up on Twitter at Patrick E. Pino or at Oakland Warriors. Check out our YouTube channel where you can watch this episode, youtube.com slash Oakland Warriors. Check us out at oaklandwarriors.com and be sure to tell your fellow Warrior fan friends to tune in and listen. The Oakland Warriors podcast is produced by National Film Society and is a part of the Basketball podcast network and if you're so inclined please do leave us a five-star rating on spotify and apple podcasts and if you want to leave us a nice review saying good stuff about the show on apple podcasts that would be hugely hugely appreciated and it would be very very helpful thanks that's it music in this episode provided by paper sun special thanks to paul amardo for production support see you next time